It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday Revelation Wellness and Elisa Keaton here to hang out with you and to encourage you and to share another message this week as it pertains to you embodying the goodness of God. You are a good idea. You, your, your body, your encompassing self from your flesh to your soul, everything about you, it is good. And there have been some struggles and things and ideas that have probably come against it. And that's what we're here today to continue to work it out. So my name is Elisa Keaton. Good morning. Good afternoon as you're coming in. Let me know where you are. I always love to take a few minutes at the beginning to find out where you guys are all around the world doing what you do. And what have you done so far today? What have you been up to? I had the joy of interviewing Jackie Hill Perry. I'm so excited to share that interview with you. It's coming soon. We had a fantastic conversation. We had such a good time. Man, this is how you know body of Christ. When we come together to glorify God, to press into scriptures and teaching, and also be honest with where we are and the things that we struggle and walk through, uh, the body of Christ is built up and God is made beautiful. And that's what we do here, Revelation Wellness. So if you are new here, welcome. My name is Elisa Keaton. I am the, uh, the, the one that the Lord called to establish this ministry 10 years ago in 2011. Uh, we became a nonprofit ministry where we use fitness, wellness, this trillion dollar industry and conversation that is not going away anytime soon. We use that as our vehicle to talk about the goodness of God because physical training has value, but it is temporal. It's the eternal things that we want to focus on. And we still, we have a body. God was given a body. Jesus comes in a body. And there's so much we can learn about embodying the gospel. I always say that the gospel is not easy, but it's simple. Can I get an amen on that? The gospel is not easy, but it is simple. So I'm here to acknowledge the hard things. Some of you have lived through really hard times, really hard moments. It would be, it would be considered potentially trauma, little t, capital T. Either way, uh, in the psychology world, they would define trauma, capital T, as any time the body is overwhelmed. It gets so overwhelmed by an instance or an emotion or experience that it, it begins, it shuts down. And that's good. You need that to happen so you can survive. And that's a capital T. And we have had a lot of things. That could be a car wreck. It could be um, a physical violation, abuse, something that overwhelms us. So we would be silly not to think those things happen. We know they happen, but by the grace of God go each of us. And then there's these little T's, these constant aggravations day after day after day and some of you were just born into a home of aggravation born into a home of dysfunction you know it might not have been abusive but it wasn't safe you didn't feel safe so we will have a hard time feeling at home in our bodies if we don't feel safe so the first thing i want to say is you are safe here so welcome to this conversation where we continue to work it out with one rule in mind or one yeah, rule i'm going to call it a rule that god's word is meant to shape our experiences our experiences are not to shape god's word that's really really important because you could spend your lifetime loving god and being in a stalemate and stuck because you need him to make sense of your experiences that his Bible, the word, what he has said, written and whispered, not just written, what you read and also what you sense what he is saying, because the two won't conflict themselves. The written word and the whispered word will not conflict themselves. But if you spend your life trying to get the gospel to make sense of your experiences, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. The gospel is to frame our experiences that we then go, we've lived through this, but I'm going to let God's word reshape it so that I will not be overwhelmed or overcome by this moment in time that I was stuck in or these continual adversities and aggressions that we experience in life. 
and you live it all out in your body. So today, I am here. Welcome, welcome, you all coming in. Good, good. Hey, would you mind hitting share? Just hit share, that's all. Consider it your way of bringing the kingdom into Facebook. I promise, I, I hold that with great um, humility. I will not take that for granted, so I will, I promise to say things that will only give people hope. I will not paint a false narrative though, that there are hard things we live through, but people need to hear real, living, active word of God that isn't just slap, a, slap some words on it and get better, that we can actually do the word, that we can actually hear it, learn it, and do it. So today's topic, I talked about how our body, what we need for our body to change, or the body change. Now I'm gonna use the word body very loosely because it can just be the body as in the, the, the container, the holding place for all the things that you think, feel, and choose in life. And we, the body, does need to change in order for us to live out what we read about God's word, right? The experience that we have, that we are letting God's word shape our experiences, not our experiences shape God's word. And we need lasting change. So before I go any further, I want to just say, because I might lose some of you, that if you're looking for real lasting change when it comes to you being an embodied person who walks and wants to um, have faith, hope, and love really be a part of who you are, you want to live optimistically, you want to have empathy, you want to you want to be able to do hard things and not fear man and really do the thing that God's called you to do and grow in the fruit of the Spirit. If you want to do that, I am inviting you to instructor training. It is a little over two weeks away from starting. And here's what I can tell you. Time and time again, the testimonies we get from instructor training, Revelation Wellness instructor training, is life changing. And that's not just a nice little sentiment. It's actually neuroscientifically backed. I can tell you why that happens in this training. So then when we're looking for real body change, we can address some of these things that must be the components or part of making change happen in our life. That we can't just wish for change, talk about change, study change. We have to work that out. We have to do change. And this is why instructor training does it because we walk through many things together. So before I get there, first thing I wanna do is remind us as followers of Christ, we're disciples that we have been called by Christ to let him disciple us and we become his disciples, all of us. If you're a follower of Christ, you're a disciple. It might feel like an old school word, but it's still true. He is looking for disciples today. God is still wanting disciples, people that will be taught and then teach others. And the word disciple means to be a learner, to be a learner. How's your learning going? What are you learning? What is the Lord? Let me put that in the chat right now. What are you learning? What is God teaching you? Because I tell you. Oh, hold on. For a second. That is the whole point. To every day, this is my get to. I get to learn more about God. I get to know more about God. I get to do this day with Him. I'm not the same person I was yesterday. I am a new person today. I am not, I've had a different experience. Some things happened yesterday that shaped me for the better today. This is why some of the most wonderful, greatest assets in the Christian faith are, are people that are of elders that have gone before us. They've walked their stories. They have so much to teach us because they have been learning and following Christ for a lot of them for their whole life. Talk about a wealth of knowledge and information. Yes, Betsy said the Lord is teaching her to move beyond bitterness. Kara says how to trust him again and not wrestle back control. Amen. These are good things. Now here's the thing, Betsy and Kara. Okay, he's, he's showing you that, uh, that this is what you're going to learn. And now, how will that get done, God? How will that get done? I'm going to highlight some things today that how it's going to get done. Okay. 
Here's the good news. God is not in a rush. He isn't trying to hurry up and get you fixed. He wants to walk with you, to teach you, talk with you, and grow you. So good to know what God is teaching you. I'm personally learning right now how to say no. <laughs> How to push just because I could do it doesn't mean I'm supposed to do it. I'm a real good doer. I'm, I'm a high capacity kind of gal. Always have been. But I'm also real quick and I burn out. I'm tired. And that is definitely not a mark of the kingdom. To be frazzled, frantic, exhausted, tired. That's just, that's something's off. And so after I return back from vacation, I am pressing into this. I am going to learn this, but I don't just get to be aware of that knowledge and then not have to act on it, which is what each of us, if God is teaching us something, he's going to give you an opportunity to apply and do it. All right. So let's talk about body change and some of these things. I'm, uh, when I say body, it's just your physical experience of life experiencing life in a physical way I can touch, taste, see, hear, feel in a new way. Body change, right? Because let's be, the, the conversation about your thighs being touching or your size of your waist, I mean, I get it, I care, but I also don't care because there's a bigger conversation. There's a bigger question to ask. There's a bigger thing that God is teaching you other than you should really stop eating past 10 p.m. <laughs> There's a reason you eat past 10 p.m. That's what we need to get to. God, that's the root. Let's go after that. Teach me what I need to know about my tendencies, my propensities, my appetites, my cravings, my longings. Teach me where I am quick to substitute you with other things. Teach me about that. Then my life will begin to change. My bodied, embodied experience of life will begin to change. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, talking about creating this change, what we need for body change. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Prior to this, Jesus is kind of is talking to God saying, God, I thank you that you have revealed hidden things um, to, uh, you, you've hidden things from the wise and the knowing, and you're revealing these things to little children. Little children. What does this mean? Why does God talk to us like we're little children? Well, because we need to be born again. I need to be mothered again. I need to be fathered again. I need to be friended again. I need to kind of relive my life through another way and truth than what I grew up in. That's huge. We just got to, that's the first thing to even consider. I'm going to have change about my embodiment, my physicality, my bodying then I've got to go, I need a new way to go. And this is where Jesus says, thank you, that these things are hidden. You're not going to find this information in the greatest blog, the most well or the, the most popular sold wellness, fitness, uh, muscle magazine. Those are just the whys and the people that are trying to get some understanding. These are hidden things that God goes, I'm going to give these to children. And Jesus like, thank you that you have, you've hidden some of this stuff and you're revealing them to children. So we need to start over, start over again, which takes us to the first point. If you are going to create a new life, one where you walk in knowledge of God's goodness and his sovereignty and his trust and his holy, that he is who he says he is, then you will have to start it from rest, from rest. Jesus says this, come to me all who are who labor and are heavy laden or heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Tell me if the fitness and wellness world, everything isn't about do this, do this, do this, try this. Have you tried this? What about this? We're constantly trying to put one thing to do on top of the other thing to do. Well, what about this? What are you doing? Well, what are you eating? I'm going to try that, right? We're just, we keep the perpetual treadmill going and slowly we're turning up faster and faster. And then you're burned out. And then God 
Jesus goes, you, you, you go ahead and come to me. You tired people, <laughs> you come to me. I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. The first thing is just rest. It has to start from rest. You have got to break up with striving. You have got to break up with even the fact that you think you can create something without God, that you can create results. You know what? You can. I, I will never deny it. Listen, you want to change your body. You want to ca count your calories. You can create change, but you will not be able to sustain it. You just won't. It'll be temporary. And we're looking for the eternal things. We're looking for the eternal things, your nature, your character, who you are, because I don't care who you are. You are not going to be able to hold back the hands of time. Your body is decaying as we speak. And that gets us fearful. And so then we get on the treadmill. We're constantly going, 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 changing, and we're tired. And God goes, are you ready to start again? Children, rest. What does a newborn baby do more than anything else? Sleep. Lots and lots and lots of sleep. Lots of sleep. But when we rest and your baby and you're sleeping, your brain is still doing a lot of work, a lot of configuring. There's a lot of good things going on. Now, if you put a baby, try to put a baby to sleep in a stressful home, that baby, it is proven their brains will, can, will be uh, affected by that stress. They will not develop and advance, have attunement and cognitive flexibility like those babies that were given love, nurturing, safety, and lots of rest. They weren't interrupted. They were allowed to sleep. That's what we need at the very beginning of everything. Everything starts from rest, you guys. Okay. Rest. We have that. You have to start from rest. And the minute you start striving again about the change you need to make and whatever you think needs to be done, just repent and go, I'm going to start from rest. What does starting from rest mean? Faith. Rest, in according to scripture, rest has everything to do with having faith. Faith. And I know, you know what faith does? It freaks us out because we have no control. It's just faith. It's like trying to, to bottle the wind. You, you, you can't. It's faith. Everything starts from, from faith. Rest gives you faith. Because you have faith, you can rest rest that God is who he says he is. He will do what he said to do, that he is the one that we yoke ourselves to. The yoke in ancient times, especially in agricultural times, was there. They would take a mature ox and yoke it to a baby ox to teach it how to plow, to teach it where to go. The older one is teaching the younger one. You would not put two babies and yoke them up if they're not going to do anything. A mature to a younger. This is discipleship. This is why Jesus goes, I'm going to teach you and then you'll teach someone else and come alongside them. Yoking is part of the call to following God, but it comes from rest. As soon as you're rested, you're going to get a yoke. Do not fear the yoke. You're not the one carrying the heavy part of it. God is, but there is a yoke. There is work to do. Can I get an amen? I did a whole series on our podcast about do the work. Do your work. If God has called you to something, do it. Stop punting on whatever you think you're not able, you're not capable. First of all, rest. But you don't just get to hang out and rest. Because rest that goes on and on, that's just lethargy. That's, that's um, slumber. That's... that's uh, a folding of the hands that makes us sick. So rest enough to where, okay, it's time to go. And you take that yoke upon you and learn from him. Learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. What would your physical life look like? What you eat, what you drink, what you say, what you feel, because feelings have energy. It's, a, it's an experience. You're having a feeling is an emotion, energy in motion inside your body. And this is why Jesus like, it's not the things that go in you that defile you. It's what's coming out of you that makes you defiled. If I've got anger and bitterness and short temperedness coming out of me, that's something that God's going, I want to heal that. That's what I want to put my finger on. So when we're gentle, and lowly in heart, 
We are going to have emotions. We're going to have things happen in our life, but we don't puff ourselves up and then take that thing, take that bull by the horns. We actually go, okay, what's here for me to learn? I put this on my Twitter account today that um, if you're concerned that your heart is not right before God, look at how you respond to people who, people or problems that irritate you. That, that if you're worried that your heart is off, just look at how you respond to those tough situations because that will tell you. If you're not responding with gentleness and humility, which means teachability, you can't offend me because I'm here to help, uh, then you're going to be okay. But if you are uh, aggravated by it, you pick up your rights, you clench your fist, you, you tighten your jaw, you shorten your breath, you get a headache, you're bothered, you're carrying that bothered energy inside of you, you're not learning from God, you're learning from the world. Because when you learn, you will have a gentle and lowly heart. That's a hard one to learn, you guys, because everything in the world is going to tell you you should really stick up for yourself. You, oh man, if I hear one more time, you deserve better. I, I don't deserve anything. I deserved hell. I deserved eternal damnation. Christ saved me. And now with the love I've received is the love that I give. I'd rather go down swinging with the best assumptions of people than thinking negatively of them. It's just better for my brain too. That's proven. It is better for your brain. All right. So this is the kind of learning we have to do. We're going, why? Oh man, I work so hard to try and make change with my body or make change of my circumstance, make change with my whatever it is that you're trying to put your hands on. This is what we're called to do is learn a new way. We have to learn a new way and it's a gentle and lowly way. What would your, I'm going to get real specific. What would your health, your well-being, your body image, the decisions you make with your physical life, what would it look like to have a gentle approach and a lowly approach? What it means by lowly, not womp womp. I'm sad. I suck. Eeyore. No. It means I put myself second to God. I'm lower than the word of God. I am lower than God's encouragement. I am lower than God's commands. It's God. Seek first his kingdom and all these things will work themselves out. So what would that look like for you to live a life thinking, feeling, and choosing, whether it's what you eat or what you drink or what you buy or don't buy with a gentle and lowly heart? All right. So now this is why change is hard for us. And here's what's needed. Here's what I want you to do. If you have a pen and paper, I want you to take it out and I want you to draw a big triangle on the paper. Big triangle. Wide base, tiny top. Big triangle. And then I want you to do one, two, three, four, five, six lines through the triangle. Go ahead. Six lines. Little top. Six, six equally spaced lines all the way through the triangle. Okay? Now this is what's needed in order for you to learn, to learn what God is saying and to then do it so that everything in your life will change. This is called the learning pyramid or the pyramid of learning. And this is why Revelation Wellness instructor training changes lives. Okay? Because you learn something. Amen? I can't change if I don't learn something. Someone has to teach me. If I'm going to learn, I need some teaching. All right, we'll do that. But there are many ways inside the, the structure of learning that stack on top of each other so that you are fully now living out what you're learning. It's not just information. So at the very top, that little triangle at the top, you're going to write the word lecture or words. 5% of what you learn, so listen, what I'm talking today, 5%. You're only going to learn 5%. It's kind of sad, but it's 5%. 5% of what you learn comes because you heard it, a lecture. You heard somebody say something. Okay, maybe if you hear it enough, you know, maybe that's why we have to hear things again and again and again. We're like, okay, I'm getting it, right? Because it's just 5%. It's only going to affect your learning skills by 5%. The next thing, next 
under that top little tiny slice of the triangle is reading. You will remember 10% of what you read. So if you read it and actually um, hear it, that's a, a little bit higher. So you're now at 15% learning, but that's still just 15%. So 10% of what you read, you will learn. By the way, are you guys reading at all? <laughs> read the word of God, read, just read, like less Netflix, less social media, read. Read a book, read, don't punt on this. Your brain is too important. You have to stretch into it. Do uncomfortable things so that you're constantly willing to learn and grow and not be stuck, frozen, shut down in your way of life. That's a quick way to be sick, is it's this way. This is how I do it. Okay. Can you be saved? Yeah, totally. I think you make it a little difficult though for everyone else around us who are like, come on, let's move. Let's keep growing. Let's not get stagnant. Let's not just say, this is how it is. So read, read, do uncomfortable things. And for a lot of people, reading is uncomfortable for us these days, especially uh, long form reading. Read, it, read a book, read something that makes you have one thought for a long amount of time. Third is audio visual. So what you see and what you hear put together. This is why teachings where they show you a demonstration. So look right now, check this out. I'm showing you something. This is your brain. I could talk about your brain or I can show you your brain. This is half a brain. Inside your brain right here is your limbic part of your brain. This is the early formation of your brain. This is responsible for emotion and memory. A lot of emotion we have, a lot of fight, flight, freeze happens here. Your limbic brain, your amygdala, it's all down here. When you exercise, there's something called your hippocampus. This is why exercise is so good for anxiety and depression. Your hippocampus starts to fire up. It actually gets bigger. It can become bigger and the amygdala gets smaller. And this is why people who exercise feel better. They're accessing some memory and some learning and some emotion, and it begins to pump out new brain cells. Your hippocampus is one of two places. This is number one. Number two is back here in the olfactory where you create new brain cells. Right here, deep, deep down. This is your prefrontal medial cortex. This does not develop until you're 25 years old or so, not fully formed and shut. But this, this gets right to work at very young. And this is where we get locked down and what we think, feel, and choose. Okay, there, I just gave you a little lesson. This is why exercise, this is why we tell people move your body. If you're stuck, move your body or get still and be in your body. 20% of what you see and hear at the same time, you will remember. You're more likely to remember that, what I just showed you, than if I just talked about it. Next thing is demonstration. Somebody demonstrates it. There's a demonstration of it. You see this thing, kind of unpack it some more and demonstrate it. That's 30% of what you learn. This is why good teachers take something and they keep pulling it apart and pulling it apart and trying to drive that one thing home and in many angles as possible. Go, oh, I got it. You didn't just talk about it, you demonstrated it to me. That's 30%. The next part, I'm going down my, my learning pyramid here is discussion. Talk about what you learned. 50%. If you hear something, you're reading something, you saw something, and now you're going to talk about the thing, you're 50% more likely to be embodying it, to learn it, to learn it and know it in you. Discussion group. Talk about it with other people. The next layer down, we're almost done, second to last for learning, is you practice by doing it. You now have to do it. If there's a doing to do, you do it. This is why Revelation Wellness Instructor training is huge for people, because they have to actually do. They have to actually exemplify what they're learning. Not perfectly, because they're learning, but they do it and just the act of doing something new changes the organization and the structure of your brain. It's called neuroplasticity. You can change your brain, but you have to do it. It's not just thinking about new things that changes your brain, it's doing new things that changes your brain. And now we're down 
Look at, look at how big my pyramid is when I come down to practice by doing. And the fourth and fi the final, the, the apex, the foundation of someone who has learned something, the very bottom, teach. Teach it. Teach it. Teach it. And that's why becoming a Revelation Wellness instructor changes people's lives. Say, so don't just sit back and hear a Bible study for nine weeks, take some notes. No. They get in, they audio, they actually engage their bodies in some things that they're learning. So that's a whole nother pathway for their brain. It's a little left-handed. It's weird. When's the last time you when's the last time you went to a church sermon and you actually did something with your body? Eh, not it's not it's not about the body, it's the fact that this chemistry, the way God wired us, that when we do stuff and hear new stuff, it just, it does something in us. This is why in Genesis uh, or in Exodus 14, 14, when God, uh, it, Moses comes to the sea, the Red Sea, and he goes, we're going to die. We've got the chariots chasing us down. And when Moses gets still and says to the people, be still, the Lord your God will tell us what to do. And then God says, Moses, what are you doing? Move. Go, put your foot, go into the sea, do it. If you do it, you'll see the revelation of who I am. You have to do it. Y'all, we all wait for the revelation to do it. We all wait for the impartation to do it. You do it and the impartation comes. Can I get an amen? Come on, you do it. It's, remember back to faith, children, start there. You don't get to be a scholar in it and sit around and study it and know it and just know it. you have to do it. So back to those two people that read and one's showing um, about some of the things God's teaching you. He's going to give you an opportunity to do something. And for the person who feels like I've been bitter in my heart, mm, he's going to give you an opportunity to maybe ask for forgiveness make the phone call, send the email, do something that punches darkness in the face, that punches your pride in the face, that punches your discomfort in the face. You do it. It does not feel good at the time. Scripture says that God disciplines his children. He disciplines those he loves. And discipline doesn't feel good at the time, but then after it produces produces something so beyond what we thought we could hold on to with our tight fist. So you all, everyone, that's the pyramid of learning. That's the pyramid of learning. And I just think a lot of us spend a lot of time up here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The internet has allowed us to spend a lot of time up here hearing good information. I got podcasts, I got teachings. Oh yeah, I got some books on Bible. I'm up here, ah, maybe I get some really good teaching here. That's great. Oh, but I don't talk about it with anyone else. We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't want to, talk. We wouldn't want to actually talk, right? Come on, Revelation Wellness Training, you're going to get in a small group. You will have a community of people you're going to walk through the training with. They are just as left-handed or right-handed, depending on which is your weaker hand as you. They are learning to, they are going, you know what? I am done trying to do it the world's way. I am going to follow Christ now. And then discussion group. Yep. Practice by doing. Yep. Teach others. Yeah. You actually will teach others. And here's the, here's the truth, and you can go ahead and ask any questions you want now. I'm wrapping it up. Any questions you have, if it's instructor training or just change or any obstacle, you're, I'm here, to, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, that many people come through our instructor training who they, they don't necessarily go out and they're going to teach others in their community, like, ah, I know what I'm going to do. But they know they're being called because they, they want this to get all the way in them that there have been some traumas, capital T, little t, there have been things in their life, disappointments, bitterness, things that have come that have separate them from the fullness, the goodness, the grace of God. And we have a saying that bad news gets stuck in good bodies. It just gets stuck. You've got this energy, you've got this stuff. It actually, if you've ever been sinned against in your body or have sinned with your body, Paul says that it's those sins that are against the body. You can actually be separated from your body 
sexual abuse, sexual addiction, sexual immorality. I'm a girl who's come through that. I was disconnected from my body. I'm still healing in connection to my body, in connection to others. There's a still work to do. I was raised in a home with pornography everywhere. There was idolatry, adultery, idolatry. It was confusing. There's a lot of messages I'm still working out. But the good news is I'm not stuck. I'm a child of God and he's constantly teaching me and every day offers me something to learn and to grow. In the kingdom, there's no problems. There really isn't. It's just endless possibilities. We have to stop showing up in the problem mentality because the problem mentality leads to the heavy yoke. But in a kingdom mentality, in possibilities and faith, gentle and lowly hearts, and we stay free. So people come through training, sometimes it's just for themselves. But here's the thing, they will teach others. So now I'm freaking some of you out because you're like, I'm telling you, if you're like, I can't do that, I can't do it, you have to do it. This is, this is a big deal. You can't sit back anymore and go, someone else do that. That's what other people do. If you're ready, you want to break free, then you got to get in your body. you got to say what heaven's saying. Say, think, and do the things of heaven. Exemplify it, even if it's just for your little 15-minute teaching that you will do it to graduate. By the way, no one's never gra not graduated. Everyone graduates from Revelation Wallace Instructor Training. Even if we have to send one of our instructors in to help you get it, we will. The only way you don't graduate is if you don't do the work. So, help others. <laughs> teach others. You will teach others if it's just for that moment. What we find time and time again, people teach others in that, that final part of their practical teaching to do as a, as a Revelation Wellness instructor. And in that moment, man, the Lord busts them loose and they're on fire and then they go out and they're starting to teach others. Because <laughs> they did not know what they didn't know. They had to step out in faith. And then the waters parted they saw themselves for who they are truly embodied by God and walking in faith. And then they're like, I can't go back. I, I'm gonna, I gotta keep teaching others. I gotta keep saying it to others. So, Deanne says, if I can graduate, anyone can graduate. Uh, Suzanne Price, yeah, you don't have to teach a class to teach others, amen. There's many ways that people use this. It's a really, it's just discipleship. It's kingdom discipleship. Revelation Wellness is not, not really a fitness ministry in terms of counting calories and weighing bodies and reps. We just really could care less. But we are saying, yet, we got a body. And my body and my brain are talking to each other. I've got some nervous energy inside of me. And I'm not going to be... I can't just con consistently and constantly spiritualize everything. Some of these things are very physical. I might have, my daughter had a bad thyroid and we could have called that, you know, all kinds of spiritual things. No, she had a really bad thyroid and we had to get it removed, got it removed, she was feeling better. There's a lot of things that we can tend to once we know that this is an embodied experience. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, and God is interested in all of it. So you teach others that message. It's all connected. Stop siloing and part and parceling your life. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Just sharing with friends and neighbors and anyone God's puts in our path. You know, and on that note, today as I got to interview Jackie Hill Perry, I mean, she's a huge woman in the church and, you know, talks the Gospel Coalition. I mean, she just has some great favor. And I was asking some questions of her in terms of this embodiment in the Gospel and things we do with our body and how she has walked through that. And she, go, and she said, and she goes, man, this was one of the best interviews I've had in a long time because you asked questions that I haven't been, I haven't heard being asked. And you've had, you've brought something that I haven't considered. I mean, these are people who like know things, but we bring something to go, have we considered this? Have we considered the pain that people carry? Have we considered how that's affected their brains? Have we considered how healing happens in a myriad of ways? Have we considered sometimes healing happens in a prayer. Let's pray for that. And sometimes healing happens in a process. This, these are the conversations we need to be having. And guess what? The world, the spiritual new age world without Jesus, they're having it all day long. And people are flocking to that because it's offering some reprieve. So we are the people to have this conversation. Imagine if you, as a young girl or a young man, 
had a conversation with your parents about your body in a way that wasn't shameful, in a way that was beautiful, in a way that gave them the first impression of how amazing their bodies are and what they were made for in the holiest and honorable of ways. What, how would that have changed you? You know, there's a theory called first impression that whatever you tell a child first, whether it's true or not, they will measure everything up against that. That becomes their stick. This is why if we can, in a t society where people are not getting uh, more clear on our bodies, if anything, we're getting more confused about our bodies, more permissive with our bodies, we gotta have the honest and clear conversations with the kindest of heart for those who hurt. That gives a new conversation for people. Our children are equipped and we have another generation equipped to say, we're not gonna punt on this. We're not gonna pass, we're gonna show up, it's, it's hard but this is really important. So join, become a Revelation Models instructor. If not, do RevWell TV free. Go further with us. We have lots of free stuff, revelationwellness.org. Go to the website, um, but I'm talking instructor training right now because it's two weeks left. You have two weeks left to do a lot of work here, and it's seriously not hard work. It's just consistent work. Show up and do the work. It's not hard. The enemy will try to tell you it's too hard, you're too old, you're too young, you're too whatever. It's consistent work. You just do it and it pays off. Yeah, Anne says, uh, yeah, if you're in Platoon 27, maybe share why you are joining. I'd love to hear that. I want to use this to find my voice. I will speak even if my voice shakes. Yes. 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 Can I tell you a funny story? Tell us otherwise, you guys, why are you joining? Um, when I first taught my very first class. I, you guys, back in the day day, in the 80s, well, this is probably early 90s, um, I took a class that taught me how to, to teach. How do I lead a class? Uh, and I took it seriously. It was actually some of those things that I took. I was a nine or 10 week program back then because it was very serious in the 80s. Now you can just do it really quick and you're done. That's kind of why I'm like, no, I want to take this seriously again. That's why we spend nine weeks doing what we do. So I did this I paid for it myself. I was in college and I was going to this little class on the side and I took it so serious. I was so excited. I just knew that I'm, something is here for me. I love it. I love it. I'm going to do this. And I've never got up in front of people. I had never used my voice, but I was going to get up there and do it. And back then we had to audition to, to get our certificate of completion. We had to teach to a room full like 40 people at a popular gym in town. Like you rolled in. They didn't, they didn't take it easy with you. They just threw you to the lions. And right before I went on, uh, on the little stage to teach this room full of people, my little routine thing, um, I ate an orange. I don't know why, and I don't usually eat oranges because oranges make my ears itch. I ate an orange and my voice disappeared. Like my voice just, ah, it was gone, 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 gone. My throat kind of closed up and I had to get up there and teach. And y'all know what I did? <laughs> I do feel it was the Holy Spirit um, got it then. I wasn't walking with the Lord then, but he was getting me where he needed me to go. I get up there and I just use, you learn visual cues. You learn how to teach if you don't have the words. And I let my body do all the talking and the pointing to just get that teaching done so I could graduate. And I did, we, we got through it. It wasn't the best of situations, but I got through it. So talk about finding your voice. I look back and like, I think the enemy was trying to take my voice from me, um, but it comes back. I'm just so scared, I'm afraid of God. Everyone, let's pray for Cheryl. Lord, we thank you for Cheryl's honest confession. Uh, thank you, God, that in, uh, when we walk in the light, we have fellowship with you and one another. Right now, God, we pray that Cheryl would know she's so loved by you because we are all gathering around in Jesus' name. We are saying, God, love the hell out of her. Tell her how amazing she is, that you are a God who ha would do anything. You did everything for her, that you so loved the world you gave, and you are giving to Cheryl. So let her see your heart as good and gracious. And we bind up the lie of Satan that she should be scared, that she is wrong. It's the blood of Christ that covers her. Give her a revelation 
And for everyone like Cheryl, in Jesus' name, give them a revelation of how good and kind you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Cheryl, you're supposed to go read some scripture. That's all I heard the Lord say the Holy Spirit. Go open your Bible, and the God's going to give you a new lens to see his love for you through his word. Because he loves you, he speaks truth. Because he loves you, he commands. Because he loves you. If I didn't love my children, I would not speak sometimes in directives. Don't do this. This is not going to end well when my you know, seven-year-old thinks putting their hand on the stove is a great thing. I want personal healing, but the more people I tell, the more they ask me to lead, to lead something. Right, that's, that's okay, Kara. Kara's like, I'm kind of just coming for me, but that's the whole point. It's not about you. I love you. Kara, you're amazing. If the Lord wants to put you on like a glove and he can talk through a donkey's mouth, you better just get out of the way. And let him do what he's going to do. Don't be uh, so certain what you are or not going to do. But I do find it's interesting that people are wanting this. People are hungry for this. Who will tell them unless you go? Answering God's call to ministry, the gospel to others, advocating for kingdom health and wellness. Amen. God loves you, only wants the best for you. Deanna says she enrolled because God has set me free and I want more than anything to be equipped to set others free. Deanna, you are already equipped. We all have an equipping of the Holy Spirit to love. You know how we set people free today? Bless them, see them, tell them how something good, call out the gold of them. That, that does set people free. But yes, there is definitely in terms of the, the fitness, the body, the obsession, neglect pattern, you will learn more and more of have the words, um, the scripture, the, the truth to set them free. It'll be on speed dial for you. God, give us what we need while using it for his purposes. Amen. I'm getting where I need to go. Prayer, lift this fog, confusing fear. Yeah, in Jesus' name. So be it. God will lift it all. All right, you guys, thank you for hanging out today. I hope that blessed you. I hope you understand. And that's just not, that whole pyramid, that's everything. <laughs> Every sermon you hear, think through. All right, I heard this. How can I demonstrate this? How can I talk about this with others? And how can I teach this to another? That it will change you, everything. The beauty is you're all teachers, it's crazy. We all have platforms now in some weird way and it doesn't matter if nobody watches it, but you go on your Instagram or you go on your Facebook and you just teach something. Who cares if nobody watches it? But the more you teach it and talk it, the more you become it. So you, you have a wide open platform to share. Don't worry about who, who cares if they see it or don't see it. You need, my friend Nika Maple says, my ears need to hear my mouth say what my heart believes. My ears need to hear my mouth say what my heart believes. And even if no one listens, I get changed. I'm 57, I'm scared, continue to patting my shoulder, telling me to step aside of my comfort zone. Amen. Go, Carla. Go, go, go. Where's my bell? Here we go. Good, Carla. Carla, you're like a spring chicken. We got people 60s, 70s that have come through Revelation Wellness, so don't even age. I don't even need to know anyone's age. It don't matter. Because if you're 57, whatever you are, God has someone else you will influence, whether older or younger than you. It's, it's God's economy. All right. <laughs> There you are, Deanne's like, I did it in my 60s. Yeah, I think our oldest, our oldest Revelation Wellness instructor, I believe, is 70. Uh, might be, actually. He's probably in his 80s now, but 70s for sure, late 70s. Youngest, 19, 20. I think a 20-year-old is our youngest. All right, you guys. Have a great day. I got to get to another call. Peace out, Cub Scout. Bless you. I'll be here next Tuesday. You can always see me on Tuesdays at 11, so set your little phone reminders and we'll hang out on Tuesdays. Back on the official Revelation Wellness community page, leave any questions. I listen to what you guys are battling and struggling with, pray about it, and come in with teachings for you as, as much as I can in real time. Peace. Talk to you guys later. later.